I'll begin with the story of my life. I was born the 1st of January 1924 into a poor family. My father was a mason and my mother worked in the fields. I went to school at the Mission Notre Dame in 1930. But the circumstances didn't allow me to finish my studies as all my friends did. But then, one doesn't learn things only at a school desk. After having been excluded from the school, I began to travel at the age of 22. I first crossed the Congo by way of Zongo, and from there walked all the way. I went on to Uganda, Urundi, Rwanda, Cameroon, Spanish Guiana, Gabon, Congo, Brazzaville, and Congo, Kishasa, coming back home on the 11th of March, 1966. So as not to lose all the knowledge I gained during my journey, I decided to paint and write down everything I saw. foodstuffs he has gotten from the crop. This is the way our ancestors worked the land. In those days, the market trade was not the same as today. Things were bought by bartering with natural products. Nowadays, it's only money that is used in exchange. Money has altered everything. Life is ruled by money. Long ago, our ancestors went down into the mines down to get a kind of stone that was then melted and used to make iron. Here you can see the results of their work. All the nations have found their ways of transportation to be able to move further. This shows how the African canoe was made. When having finished hollowing out the canoe in the jungle, the men pull it on top of small wooden rollers down to the water. In every lineage, the head of the family is the one who distributes justice. the Yakimas, when someone is accused of being a witch, the chief asks for the bark of a bitter tree and prepares with it a poisonous drink that is to be drunk by the accused. If he is not guilty, he survives. 
When a father wants to find a wife for his son, he makes a trip to a village in the neighborhood and has a look to see if a suitable girl can be found. If so, the parents of the girl fix the dowry and ask him in exchange to bring something to drink and some presents. Twins are sent by God. Twins bring good luck and happiness. When twins are born into a family, a huge celebration takes place. People show their joy. They dance. They drink and sing. <laughs> This was the way the Yakimas fought in the past against the others. Enemy against enemy, lance against lance. Here you can see the story of Rabbit, slave trader who brought misery to our country. His soldiers burnt down the village. Here they are hunting slaves. They were collected together by the soldiers. And now they are dragged like animals to the marketplace. That's exactly how it happened. In the morning, the administrator was seen at the hoisting of the colors. He sent the guards into the village to catch those who hadn't paid their taxes. administrator is sitting down to do his accounts. Now the inhabitants of the village are bringing him eggs and chickens as a present. In this picture, the administrator is setting out for a long tour. Here you can see the porters with the luggage. He was transported on a hand-carried chair called a tipoy because there were no roads. Before lorries were brought into the country, the officials were transferred from one place to another in hand carts called puspus. Later, lorries were brought into the country. The surveyor went everywhere to prepare and make roads. We have the mutual efforts of our ancestors to thank today that we have cars with rubber wheels. And this is the truth. arrived, their government obliged our ancestors by force and whip to extract the sap of huge trees in the jungle. The work went on for a week, sometimes even two. Our men worked under the strict control of a soldier with a gun and cartridges. times the local army was called the French army. Nowadays it is called the Central African National Army. These were the activities and memories of how the colonists treated our country. So to be sure not to lose the memories of that time, I have painted everything into these pictures. I 
was born under the colonial policy. I have lived through it, and I sure know what I say. All countries and all nations, regardless of their language, keep as a memory of the life of their ancestors different images and writings. So why not we as well? We owe these visions of the Central African tradition to the touch of the crayon and brush of Clément-Marie Biazin, a Central African artist.